So Mercury, Mercury sent me this thing, it's the Carvera Air. As far as I can work out, it's the little brother of the Carvera. Now the Carvera weighs about, oh, about 50 kilos and costs just over £4,000. This weighs about 35 kilos and costs just under £2,000. So somewhere, of course, they've had to say 15 kilos and £2,000. So it doesn't have some of the things that the Carvera has, like the tool change option, for instance, is missing. But the objective of this was to bring the machine price down to affordable for the maker community, and so you could have a desktop, very adaptable machine for an affordable price. I mean, £2,000 is, is not cheap, but it is in the realms of affordability. And when they asked me, of course, I had a bit of a crisis of confidence, because, to be honest, I have never touched a CNC machine before. I've never done any serious CAM programming, so that was going to be an issue for me. My main CAD program that I use is Tinkercad, so I was going to have to pick something else up. And I work mostly in 3D printers with plastic, so working metals using CNC was going to be a new experience to me. So I thought, well, can I actually give any value in a review? Because as a complete noob, what can I actually say about this machine that would be of value to people? Uh, and then it struck me, of course, there's probably an awful lot of people out there just like me. They've had no experience of this stuff, but would like one and are thinking about it, but really don't know what's involved. So I thought a journey through what was involved in terms of learning all what I needed to know, picking up the machine and making something that I had designed might actually have value. So I ended up saying yes, and, and they sent it to me. Now, the, what I decided to do was remake this. Well, this is, is an extremely compact gearbox. It's a 60 to 1 ratio in this little package here, and it uses a perpetual wedge and an eccentric drive. So it's kind of a hybrid drive. I'm actually quite proud of it. It's actually pretty cool and works beautifully, but it would be nice to see it in metal. So this thing here will work with a, like a huge range of things. I mean, it works with plastics, it works with wood, it works with soft metals like aluminium and brass, and it's set up as well to do things like PCBs and all that sort of stuff. It comes with a, a laser head as well, so you can do some laser cutting with it if you want. So really trying to be an all-in-one machine. So quickly some of the features of it, because I have covered this in other videos, but the bed size is 200 by 300, though it does have a back panel here that can come off, so you can use longer bits with it if you want. This is the main tool head that takes the tools in and out, although as I said, there is a laser option to attach here. Though the laser is a 10 watt diode laser, so really suitable for engraving more than anything. The motor here is a 200 watt motor that has some crazy RPMs, like 12,000 RPMs, I forget which, but it spins quickly. Uh, and that can be thought of really as a little detrimental because it's not a very high powered motor. But it does a really good job. This dust extraction, to get the dust extraction working, you have to attach a vacuum on an inlet on the side of the machine because this, of course, is subtractive manufacturing. And what that means is it takes a block of something and knocks bits off. And those bits get everywhere <laughs> unless you actually extract them and suck them up somewhere. And there's a, an air assist right here where you can attach a pump, an air pump, to blow air onto the workpiece if you happen to be working metal to keep the bit cool and clear away the chips. Now, of course, it is a mill, so it's relatively noisy as it happens, but when you close the cover down, it's a very beautiful machine and it does cut down the noise and dust dramatically. Now, you can see why they've made some of the decisions that they've made, because there are some bits here that you're going to need to add to get it fully functional. I mean, myself, I actually didn't bother with the vacuum clean or the air assist. I just let it throw bits around because I'm in the garage and then I hoovered them up afterwards. With the cooling, I actually didn't find it a particular issue, even though I cut quite a bit of metal, about the bits getting hot. Maybe it's going to shorten the life of my bits. I guess I'll find out. 
On the other side of it, you've got here a tablet. Now, it apparently works off computer, tablet or phone. I actually bought this. It's a Samsung Galaxy A9. And I have heard people complain about this, that they had a problem linking these two up. Actually, I had no problem. The A9 seems to work well. And I bought this at my local supermarket for a hundred pounds. I mean, it was on sale, but that's all it was. This contains all the control software, the Maker app. Now, it's coming from the world of 3D printing. I found that a bit disappointing, but you can understand why they left it out to try to keep the price of this down. And this bit of equipment, even though I bought a dedicated one, is something lots of people have hanging around. The transfer I use is uh, Wi-Fi on this one. The Wi-Fi is internal to the machine and works really well, actually. I have no problems at all with it. There's a cable in it at the moment that I'm actually just using as a charge cable because there are two ports at the back of the machine, one for charge and one for data. They recommend you plug it into your computer first. I didn't bother. I just went straight onto the tablet. Worked fine. So without meaning to be rude, and I am sorry if it comes across that way, but I find a lot of review videos to be pretty samey and pretty tedious. An expert in the field will blast through a few of the tech specs and do some nice jaunty music while they cut something out. And sure, it's kind of entertaining, but not much use to me, which is why I've chosen this different route. Now, you talking about this. We're not showing it so much because, of course, I've done seven other videos on every aspect of it, and it's something like two or three hours of video if you feel brave enough to watch it, but it does follow the complete journey from me getting this out of the box, struggling to learn stuff, and finally making something, because what I had to do was not only get it out of the box and set it up, I learned from Ground Zero FreeCAD, then I had to learn Maker a Cam, then I had to get used to the actual app and install the app and get the app talking to the machine and up and running. And then of course I had to do some practice with metal pieces, including getting the blanks ready. So it was not an easy task. If you want to get out of the box and give something a go, then uh, yeah, here it is. Maker do supply this a user's guide of examples that they've prepared and they also send a whole lot of equipment their idea being that if you give it a go you'll soon learn it and I agree with that it's one of those give it a go jobs but I wanted to do something that I'd come up with rather than a practice kit that somebody else would come up with so I probably loaded myself with far more work than I needed to do and all of that has been videoed and it's in a playlist called CNC if you're feeling brave enough to watch those other seven videos <laughs> go for it because that's where I do an awful lot of the work and exploration of this machine and as I say from ground zero it took me about two weeks to get used to it and to produce something that I'm actually quite proud of and as I said the objective was to take this and turn it into metal. And this showed up some of the limitations, or rather some of the constraints of the machine. Because the kind of um, resolution you can get on this is 0.2 of a millimeter because of course it's extruding plastic. The resolution you get on this depends on the bits that you're using. Now I only have used the supplied bits, so the smallest bit that I had was 2 millimeters across and 12 millimeters deep, though I did have an engraving bit and a few corn bits that were uh, 0.6 of a millimeter and 0.2 of a millimeter. And I figured I could give it a go making the gears, because remember this gear has 120 teeth on one side and 122 teeth on the other, and here is the aluminium result, and it is god awful. It doesn't work at all. It, it won't engage properly. The teeth are far too delicate. They've not been cut properly, so they're all rounded, and that's because of the bit limitation. So I totally failed to make a fine gear like that. Now, I did try to make it in flat profile. What I could probably have done is put it on here and then use that as an indexing plate to index the teeth. That would have been great for that kind of spur gear. But this, of course, is a ring gear, and if I pop it on there, there's absolutely no way to index the teeth that way. And, of course, with the two being necessary, then it was a bit of a failure. And, and I don't know what to do about that, but I'm going to give it some more thought and see what we can do. What I actually did was turn to a design of a friend of mine.
And here it is, it's a Stackle Cycloid 15 to 1 gearbox designed to be 3D printed by Bordelon Johansson. Now I've put the link in the description because Bord is really happy for people to have this and be able to print it off and use it, and it's an exceptional piece of design. However, you rarely get something that you can use out of the box. People often think of Thingiverse in the same way as buying a kit off the shelf. There is always variation, and if you want to make it a different machine, you can expect to do some redesign, which is exactly what I had to do, because if I'm working with fixed size aluminium stock, it's three millimeters, five millimeters, or 10 millimeters thick. So I made some changes to design so that I could make it on this thing, and I'm sure Board will forgive me for doing that, but it is his design, and it's a brilliant design. Now, here are the bits that I came up with, and we'll have a look at those in a bit of a close-up. So these bits, which is the uh, main inner ring, the drive ring, the eccentric, were milled out of 3mm aluminium plate. This bit, which is the main drive output, was 5mm, and you see the pretty pattern that it actually got. We've got two axles out of brass, then we've got some bought bolts, and then we have these two bits. Now, I was going to do these out of metal until I decided that, hey, they'd look really pretty if you could see through them. So that's 5mm and that's 10mm, so I did these out of acrylic instead. So this little bit of plastic, surprisingly enough, was an important learning experience for me. Because when I got that machine and decided to make the plates out of plastic so we could see the gear mechanism working, of course I stuck the acrylic in the machine, but I didn't make the tabs big enough. And it broke on the central piece, caught the bit and snapped the bit. And it took quite a while actually to do these bits, about an hour and a half or so. After that happened, I thought, oh, come on, and I turned to this thing, because of course I got this 55 watt CO2 laser as one of the tools in my armory, and I cut the blank of that out on the laser in about a minute. So in about a minute it had done everything apart from the pocket. Then I cut the pocket on the CNC machine, and that took about 10 minutes, so the whole thing was made quickly, cleanly, and actually very much more beautifully. So it's kind of a moral lesson that you use the tools you've got that are appropriate to the job. Now, I guess I'm lucky in having a CO2 laser cutter, but lots of other people's videos I've seen where they have workshops have this kind of equipment in. It's, it's kind of the modern workshop. You're seeing CNC laser cutters and 3D printers overtaking other kinds of tooling. This is what people are using. So use the tool appropriate to the job and you find your job very much easier, very much neater, and it actually gets the job done. So although I was trying to dedicate it to the CNC machine because I thought, you know, um, it, it's about this machine, we should do it for this machine. Then also about this machine is if you've got a better tool, use that because the CNC is part of an armory of tools, not a single tool by itself. Yes, it can do an awful lot of things, and yes, it's very impressive, but if you have other tools, use them. Putting the machine together is pretty easy. Insert the axles into the eccentric and the driven wheel. They're a pretty tight fit, so encourage them in. On the back plate, the 10 millimeter, it's got two pockets in it. That one feeds through the bearing. The bearings actually are 12 millimeters by four millimeters by eight millimeters. They're just what I happen to have. And then on the five millimeter, the eccentric goes in the pocket side. So that goes in there like that. That goes on top of the eccentric, so it's like that. Push the eccentric up so it fits. We might want to put a spacer in there, actually, so maybe 3D printer spacer. Then this one goes on the top with a bit of a jiggle around to make sure that it actually lines up. And then when you've done that, that whole thing engages with there like that. And we put four bolts through. So once it's put together, it's actually a thing of beauty. Of course, you turn the input shaft, the output shaft turns at 115 to the speed. But what's really cool is because I put acrylic plates on it, you can actually see it do it. Now, that's the first thing I've made on this, and I think it's absolutely wonderful. Now, the clearances that this could get were quite tight, actually. That shows up in the eccentric. The eccentric hole is 0.05 millimetres bigger than the eccentric itself. So in terms of clearance, that's pretty tight and the turning of it's very smooth for that tight clearance. So that's quite impressive in its own way that it's been able to do that. The machine 
is an awesome machine. The Mercury have a great deal of commitment to this and if you haven't checked it out, you should check out their YouTube channel. There's a tremendous amount of backup to uh, using this and demonstrating this and that's kind of key because uh, uh, however, however hard the manufacturers try across the board to make it an out-of-the-box experience, that very, very much depends. If this is your first machine and you've no experience of this whatsoever, then yes, you've got a journey to take. It's a bit of a learning curve because you've got a lot to learn, as we've probably seen over the previous seven videos. However, if you come from a background of 3D printing like I do, a lot of that stuff you've already taken care of. I mean, I used Tinkercad and I've had to learn FreeCAD, which I did for this, in order to be experience what it would be like from ground zero. But a lot of the CAD programming, a lot of the machine handling, you're already going to be used to. And that's a big part of it. When you've got that under your belt, then, you know, you're, you're flying, really. There are quirks and things to learn about it, and you will learn them as you go along. The thing to do is not to try, try to be uh, an absolute professional with it from day one. That's not going to happen. It's like anything, you're going to make mistakes. To make mistakes doesn't mean you're bad at what you're doing. It means you're learning what you're doing. It's not a bad thing. You only learn when you make a mistake. If you don't make a mistake, you don't learn anything. So, yes, there's a learning curve, as there are with all machines. But it's not something to be afraid of. It's just an elephant burger, small bite at a time, and you'll find suddenly you're doing wonderful things that you never thought you could do again. Now, I have heard it said that challenging yourself to learn a new skill, particularly in your later years in life like me, helps stave off things like Alzheimer's because it gets those old grey cells firing and struggling to learn something new and that's actually a good thing. So if you put off with this because you've got something new to learn, Maybe you should have a rethink about that particular aspect of it and embrace learning something new. In terms of being your only machine, well, it is a good all-rounder. But like all good all-rounders, it does something, some things really very well, like the pocketing, for instance. And some things sometimes not as well as you want. So like I said, the laser's 10 watt diode, and that's great for engraving, but you're not going to be cutting plastic with it. So if you want to cut plastic, the laser won't really suffice to be able to do that. Because why would you want to cut plastic when you can mill it? But if we looked at that before sometimes, it's jolly handy to be able to do both of those jobs at once. So it would be a good first machine, yes. But it would be better if it was part of your arsenal, part of your range of things. Don't expect this to make, mean that you're going to be abandoning the hand tools. When I did the... Um, cutting out of this and left the tabs. Of course you have to saw the tabs out and then you have to file them flat and so things like having a vice, saws and files also comes in jolly handy. So it's not going to be ever a standalone throw away all your other tools. It's always going to be part of a workshop. It does help being able to achieve these designs quickly and accurately with something like this that honestly would have taken quite a while for me to cut out by hand or machine another way because I just don't have the tools to do that and I probably don't have the experience or skills to do that whereas this helped a great deal in being able to overcome those kind of things. Now as you pointed out I have a, a laser cutter, a pretty good one, and some nice 3D printers and where this comes in terms of price is somewhere between the two of them. It's a bit more expensive than a 3D printer but a bit cheaper than a decent laser cutter so the price actually for the tool that it is I think is pretty reasonable. So overall I'm actually very positive about this. Now obviously I've had the thing for two weeks and we've made one model, actually this has obviously been three or four times to try and get this right, but one model with it so there's an awful lot more to do with it but on terms of what the machine is I've enjoyed using it, I've found it very useful, it seems very robust, it can do jobs that I would want to do and I don't think it's that expensive. There is a learning curve on the negative side as there always going to be. Uh, it's a little bit more noisy and it is a bit more dirty so you need to have it in a place where you can clean up. Anyway, those are the things I found out about it. I will put all of this together in one omnibus video if I get round to it. But be warned, it's going to be about a three hour long video. I hope you've enjoyed the series so far. I hope you found information that you would be useful to you when you're looking at making a decision about whether you would buy such a thing. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe.